Hello and welcome to another AIC video. So for the last week or so, I took my time with this laptop and really sat down and, and wrote a whole script out for it. I downloaded applications and games, upgraded storage, disassembled it to show you the internals of it. And in the end, I have scrapped all of that. The reason being is I don't like this laptop and I can't recommend it. Due to its specifications, it is so kneecapped in its performance that it is nearly unusable. I will go over the laptop a little bit just so you know what we're dealing with here. It is an ASUS E410K. It is a budget system. I paid less than $200 for this laptop on Best Buy's website. It comes with an Intel Celeron N4500. 4 gigs of RAM and 128 gig eMMC flash storage. It is a 14 inch screen. It is just 1366 by 768 non IPS screen. I believe it's a TN panel, pretty low quality. But for the price, about $180, I was really excited for this laptop, hoping to showcase something that, while inexpensive and maybe not a top performer, would bring a lot of value to somebody. As I mentioned, the screen on this laptop is very much its weak point. Looking at this, it is very hard to have this screen at an angle where viewing is good. Uh, I struggled with constant positioning of the screen. If I ever moved my position, I'd immediately be looking at a half a blank screen, odd colors, weird ghosting. And so I found myself constantly adjusting the screen so that it was usable. Uh, at 14 inches, this resolution of screen should be criminal. Uh, it is just not acceptable in this day and age to have such a low resolution on this size of screen. Even on an 11 inch screen, uh, I did review this one's baby brother not too long ago, um, that resolution is barely adequate. So I would not buy a laptop that doesn't have at least a 1920 by 1080 screen on a screen of 14 inches or larger. The keyboard on this laptop is an, unfortunately another weak point. It doesn't have much flex, which you would normally expect with a laptop of this price point, but the keycaps have a, or the keys have a very short throw and the keycaps are very light and cheap feeling. It also has a very hollow, very inexpensive sound to it. It's a fairly unpleasant typing experience. Another criminal act that this laptop performs is this row of extra keys down here along the right side of the keyboard. One thing about a 14 inch notebook typically, or at least historically, me meant that the keyboard was centered to the laptop and the screen with the touchpad in the center as well. By having these keys off to the side, it means that the keyboard is no longer centered to the system and it is a fairly minor annoyance. I'm sure most people would get used to it pretty quick. But if you are ever using this for long periods of time, you'll feel like you're always kind of off center, where if you have any kind of uh, RSI, repetitive stress uh, injury, uh, carpal tunnel, anything like that, this laptop would cause you discomfort. At least it did for me, for sure. One plus on this laptop is the touchpad. It is this design that Asus has had on a few of these computers that I've reviewed, where it's actually a numpad built in to the system. And so you can actually, with a long press right here where it says on and off, the light comes on and now you have a 10 key number pad. If you're ever doing any kind of school work, um, any kind of accounting, like if it's tax season, anything like that, where you don't necessarily need a number pad all the time with a laptop, sometimes they can re be really, really handy. And instead of having an external device um, or just suffering with the number row at the top of the keyboard, being able to have that numpad is really a huge benefit. Uh, it also reacts with the ca uh, calculator on the screen. And so you can do a lot of those functions that you do uh, with a numpad right here on the system without having to have that external device. And I really wish that this is a feature that more laptop makers would come out with. I think it's a great option and I really wish it was more common. Now the touchpad is a bit small, but for the price point, I do forgive it. It's accurate, it's responsive. Um, I didn't feel like it picked up extra presses when I was typing, things like that. And it actually has, unlike the keyboard, a fairly nice click on it. And it feels very solid and, and very nice. In fact, this trackpad feels out of place on this laptop because it's so much nicer than the rest of the system. 
Another thing that ASUS has included both on this system and its smaller 11 inch system that I reviewed a little while ago is it does include an M.2 slot. This did upgrade with a NVMe drive. I was able to put a one terabyte in here. It was recognized by the system just fine. Move some files over to it. Performance was great. And so for a system like this, it really adds or it could add some longevity to the system being able to upgrade the storage. Even a lot of higher end systems are starting to move away from that, looking at you, Apple, um, from being able to upgrade your storage on the system. So that is a nice bonus on the system. One thing I found a little frustrating on this computer is it, for its size, it has fairly large speakers. At least the little sound box that the speakers are in are, are fairly large. Uh, but when you go to actually watch any multimedia on here, play any games, listen to music, videos, anything like that, the sound quality on this laptop is pretty terrible. It used to be with these ASUS laptops, they seem to be a lot more focused on multimedia, on streaming videos, things like that, which is a great use case, or should be a great use case for these systems. Um, and so they actually had much better sound than some of the competitors that I reviewed, again, in this sub $200 price point. Unfortunately, that is no longer the case, and the sound quality on these is pretty abysmal. Uh, no bottom end, no top end, and the mid sound like you're listening to them through ears full of mud. Now, when you actually go to open up this laptop, that's when things really start to fall apart. First, there are two sizes of screws uh, along the back here, along the back row. There is six, or excuse me, three screws of a size along the middle, three more screws of the same size, and along the front edge, a, four screws of a smaller size. Uh, that's a bit annoying to have two different sizes. Um, most people aren't going to be taking this laptop apart, so it's not a big deal probably for most people. But if you ever do, you need to make sure that you keep where those screws go. Um, so that way you're not screwing the wrong screw back into the wrong hole and over penetrating something and breaking. Now, once you have it open and you look inside, the first thing you'll notice is that there is so much room in here for activities. Seriously, it's ridiculous. Obviously, this system board and battery were meant to be used in other smaller systems, and they threw it into this bigger case. You could have had a much bigger battery. You could have had upgradable memory uh, in this system for the space that's in here. And not having that is really unfortunate. I understand, again, we're talking about a price point, but with it being such a big system with so much empty air in there, not really a fan. And then you pull that copper heat sink off and what do you get? A soldered CPU and soldered memory and soldered storage. Again, the storage can be upgraded with that M.2 slot, but the soldered RAM is a problem. And this is where the biggest fall of this laptop is for me. And in fact, all the laptops in this class. I've been reviewing this sub notebook class for nearly a decade. Started off with Intel Atom systems. Loved them. Terrible computers, but for the price you tip, typically got a lot of value in a system that lasts you a year to 18 months. Very inexpensively, especially for like students, uh, kids, uh, people who are traveling, a second computer. Like I travel, especially at the time when I started doing this, I was traveling a lot for work. And so I'd have my work laptop, but I didn't want to do personal things like check my email, stuff like that, my banking on my work laptop and the work VPN. And so I'd often have a second computer with me, having a much smaller, inexpensive computer meant I could bring something along with me. I didn't really worry about getting damaged or lost if it did. Um, that unfortunately never happened for me, but in case I, it was nice to have that peace of mind. They start off with two gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of storage. That was quickly upgraded to four gigs of RAM and between 32 and 64 gigs of storage, uh, which was much more appropriate for Windows XP. We have now moved into Windows 11. And with Windows 11, four gigs of RAM is simply not enough. On a fresh boot on this system with nothing running, literally nothing running, nothing even installed, a fresh wipe of the OS, all updates done, fresh reboot, you're running at between 60, or excuse me, you're running at between 54 and 60% consumed of memory. That's on a fresh boot with nothing else running. As soon as you open up Google Chrome with just a single tab open to, in this case, Google Docs, 
we were pushed up to 64 to 70% memory utilization. You start opening up anything else, you start pushing those uh, 80 to 90 and 100% memory utilization. What does that mean for you as a user? It means that things that should be in memory are now being swapped to your storage. This has that eMMC storage, which is nearly as slow as a spinning hard drive. And you're swapping those files back and forth and it will feel dog slow. This will just feel miserable to use. It will be so unpleasant. You will hate it. And that's why I can't recommend a system like this. Not because the CPU isn't better. This is a better CPU than the last one. Last one had an N4020 Celeron, uh, which was on the old 14 nanometer process. This is on the 10 nanometer process. Significantly, f uh, it's the same uh, clock speeds, but with far more instructions per clock, um, same TDP. So it's at six watts, which is really, really low, but at a smaller nanometer, you're getting better performance out of the same wattage on the CPU a much better graphics uh, processor in here. Um, just just better in every single way, and yet is so hampered by that four gigs of memory, it is almost unusable in Windows 11. Truly an unacceptable experience for me. This coming Christmas season, if you're looking for a laptop for a loved one, for a family member, and you're looking at something new in the sub 200 category, don't buy just don't if it only has four gigs of memory skip it i've seen some laptops with six gigs those are better but still not great and then at least a minimum of eight gigs of memory preferably 16 or more especially if the system is not upgradable now whether the system upgradable will be upgradable or not that you'll have to do some research on watch videos like this one uh, but in the end you have to make sure that what you're getting will be usable for the current operating systems and for six to eight months a year down the road. So if you're under $500 at this price point, at this time, don't buy anything new unless it is such a good deal and it is has the specs to back up what you're paying for. At least eight gigs of RAM, at least 500 gigs of SSD, not EMMC storage, but SSD storage, um, and a 1920 by 1080 screen. Otherwise, for your same money, you can buy something used, a business class laptop that will be so much further ahead of anything you could buy at that price point. A lot of them, even if they're less than two to three years old, will even still have factory warranty on them. That's kind of hit or miss, depends on where they are in their life cycle, but I have definitely bought laptops that um, I knew I was buying something that needed some repair and it ended up being something that I was able to send in for repair to Lenovo in this case because it was still under factory warranty. So anyways, that's my video. Uh, if you have any comments, thoughts, or questions, leave those down in the comment section down below. I will do my best to answer those. But again, if you're looking for a new laptop this holiday season and it only has four gigs of RAM, skip it. Anyways, thank you for watching and I hope you have an amazing day.